Hey guys, in this video, I want to share with you just some information on uh, what's behind uh, plaquing in the uh, arteries, okay? So there's, there's just a massive amount of confusion that's out there in relationship to the sequence of events that occur, the exact cause and effect relationship. Somehow, so-called science doesn't want to be too positive and really say this causes this. Everything is associated, there's risk factors, and it puts the, the patient in a massive confusion. So let's just take a look at some of the pieces of the puzzle, and then we can rearrange them in a correct sequence of events. Amyloid placking, um, that's actually uh, one of the things that messes up your neurons in the brain, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, so you have placking in the brain. Um, and then you have also placking in the arteries. You can have amyloid placking in the liver, in the kidney, and even in the pancreas that can actually shut down the cells that make insulin and cause diabetes type 1, okay? Even make it type 2 as well. You can have this placking in the joints, is rheumatoid arthritis. So if you think about it, you have the brain, you have the arteries, you have the gums, is gingivitis and all that placking. You have, uh, in the joints, you have, all, you have inflammation, you have placking, you have all sorts of uh, scar tissue in there. So there's an interesting phenomena that's occurring in different parts of the body. Okay, so when you go to the doctor, you might, uh, they might test for amyloid placking, and there's a medication for that. They might find that you have intracellular calcium or calcium placking, so that's why we have, and you get high blood pressure, and that's why you have calcium channel blockers for that. Or you might have high cholesterol, so we give you, put you on a statin. Uh, or you might have high insulin, and we can put you on diabetic medication. Or bacteria shows up, and they put you on some type of antibiotic or high levels of white blood cell and they put you on a cortisone shot, right? So you have all these different things that occur. Um, so my thought is let's take a look at this and what would happen as a chain reaction, first, second, third, and fourth, okay? Here's what I think that's happening. Number one, you start off with, you don't start off with high cholesterol. You start off with high insulin, okay? When you have high insulin, it makes the cells in the vascular system the little cells that compose what's called endothelium, it creates a leak in those cells, okay? Very similar to leaky gut, where you have another uh, set of inflammation and scar tissue and the whole thing. I didn't even talk about that. So you have this little leaking through the artery wall, and boom, you're gonna actually stir up a hornet's nest with the immune system, okay? So if you start off with high insulin, and it could be other things too. You could have very low vitamin C, which almost like a borderline scurvy and create the same like ulcers or a lesion in the artery wall as well. So we could have a vitamin C deficiency. Let's say you're just a junk food junkie. That's gonna create it too. A lot of uh, stress in the vascular system or you're an alcoholic. All these things, nutritional deficiencies, chemicals can start this reaction. But the, the second thing you get is artery damage. Okay, so we have artery damage. And it could be damage in the joints and the liver and the brain, depending on your uh, weakest link in your body. So after you get this artery damage, then guess what's gonna happen? You're more susceptible to uh, bacteria at that point, okay? Now, they've even found the same microbes in gingivitis in your, in your gums, in your arteries, okay? So that's an interesting coincidence. So I'm wondering what other part of the body it affects too. And then you'll get an immune reaction, that's number four. So inflammation is not really the cause of these things, it's the effect, okay? That's what you need to straighten out. And then what happens, here comes the cholesterol. The cholesterol acts as a Band-Aid to come in there. So there's two types of cholesterol. Uh, I'm sorry, there's two types of uh, LDL, which is so-called bad cholesterol. And I did a video on this, I'll put all these links down below. You have type A, and type B. Type A is the big, fluffy, uh, you know, type of cholesterol that doesn't, it's not involved in um, trying to do anything with this artery wall. Type B is very small and dense, and those are the guys that are always involved in trying to heal this lesion in the wall. Okay, so how do you know if you have type A or type B? Because they're usually combined, you can't tell. You look at your triglycerides. If your triglycerides are high, and your HDL is low, or possibly normal, then you have more B. That means that there's something going on, there's some type of healing going on, there's some type of um, something going on in your body that you need to address, okay? 
So this is not the villain. This is the thing that comes in as a chain reaction to help try to put a Band-Aid and try to heal this thing, okay? Because cholesterol is there to actually help heal certain things. So we don't want to completely lower this. We want to understand what's happening. So we have this cholesterol, then comes the amyloid placking, okay? Or other types of fibrous tissue. This is all protein. It's like a, it's a part of the Band-Aid. You're going to start getting stiffening of the arteries if there's too much of this. Then we get the calcium. Calcium starts building up. So we have this whole mesh of this Band-Aid. It's made from protein, calcium, and cholesterol that's all trying to heal this area. That's what your body's trying to do. So for someone to come in there and start treating these without understanding it is just completely, utterly insane. So I just wanted to kind of show you the sequence of events. Step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's really the order of things that occur. And it's happening all over your body. So, and I'll put a link down below of what you need to do uh, for this culprit right here, because this is a big one. And this actually will cause high blood pressure and obesity, but obesity is the last thing to occur, not the first. Thanks for watching. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide. Major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, a uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.